Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Addie and I make tutorials to help you use Procreate to paint cool stuff. Today we are going to be painting this watercolor teddy bear. If you are a beginner or you're hesitant to draw animals, don't worry because the brushes that we're using for this make it really accessible for anybody to draw cute animals regardless of your experience level. I will be using the Easy Peasy Animal Drawing Kit made by Lisa Glanz, which has a bunch of templates that you can use as guides to create little anthropomorphic animal characters. If you want to follow along using the kit, I have that linked in the description below. For the watercolor painting portion, I will be using a free brush that's available to my newsletter subscribers. It is the Dark Seep brush. The color palette that I am using is also free when you sign up for the newsletter. It is the November 2021 palette. All right, let's get into it. Now to start, the animal drawing kit comes with a canvas and that comprises of most of the poses and different animal heads that are included. So I'm going to, starting from the gallery page, I'm just going to tap import here. So then I'm going to import that file and it brings me right into the document, which is perfect. So you can see here, if I hide the instruction thing, there's a group for heads and a group for bodies. And then you can hide and reveal these to change the pose. And I've already installed the brush set for the animal kit. And this is fun. It includes different ways to dress up your character. And of course you can use these as a base clothing and then change the styling of them. But it is helpful to have that as a template, especially for some of these trickier positions that you might not know how that clothing would sit on the body without that reference. And then there's also included a facing view of all of the animal heads as well as tails. Um, <laughs> the bunny tail just kills me. Like how cute is that? So that's what the kit includes. There's also instructions. Highly recommend if you get this that you go through them because everything is super clear and laid out. But what I'm going to show you today is just how to jump in and start using the kit. So the first thing to decide is what animal we're going to draw. But for today, let's draw a cute little bear. And then from here, there are all of these different anthropomorphic poses as well as a couple more um, animal style ones, if you will. So I'm gonna choose this sitting down one. Now that I've chosen, I'm going to select both of those layers. And then I'm going to drag these out and tap gallery. And then in my gallery, I'm still keeping my pencil to the screen to hold these layers in place. I'm going to create a new file, 3000 by 3000 square. Once again, still holding my pencil to the screen to keep these layers in place. I can drag and drop these and it imports them as separate layers. So now I'm going to group this, add in a few layers here pop out my color palette by just pulling on the top tab here and choosing a light gray. We can choose if we wanna dress this guy. So if I look to the sitting upright here, there are a few options, including, oh my gosh, these are so cute, these little pants with the buttons. So I'm going to tap once to stamp these on the screen and they're almost to scale, but I can position them using uniform transform so that everything stays proportional. This is a little fussy, but um, everything is going to be used as a guide, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And they do eventually line up once you get them to the right scale. And you can see if I line up the arm here, I'll zoom in here, the outline of this side of the clothing is a little bigger than the body, which is as it should be because your clothes are just a bit larger than you. And that's called ease. I'm just going to use a pencil and I'm still on this layer. I'm going to add in some suspenders here. You can use any pencil you want. So one thing I think that this can be really helpful for is when you know what you want to draw, but you don't necessarily know how and you're struggling to execute, this can be super helpful to expedite that process and help you get some of those reps in of practice. And now I'm not, I'm not gonna be super careful with this. I'm just gonna draw some clips here. And then I will trace over everything and use this as the template for my line work. 
Okay, so I think that this is all I'm going to do as far as what he's wearing. I'm going to quick sketch in some features and we're gonna keep this super simple. This is very much a stylized little bear, so I don't need to get super realistic. One of my favorite ways to automatically make something cute is do wide set eyes. If you want to adjust the positioning, you can tap the transform arrow to move the actual placement and positioning of the eyes. I find that the closer the eyes are to being level with the nose, the cuter a character often is. And so that's a positioning that I like to play around with to really maximize the cuteness. This eye here will not be quite the same shape. It will be the same height. So I'm turning off of uniform so that I can change the proportions and I'm just going to squeeze that there. But I do like that it protrudes just a little bit from the face. So you can see like there's that slight curvature here. Okay, so now that's my, my rough basic idea here and we can sketch over it. I'm going to go ahead and merge all of this together so it's in one layer so I can easily reduce the opacity here. And then on my upper layer here, I'm gonna to switch to a dark gray. Still using the pencil brush, I am going to trace over the lines, making some small changes along the way. So this is your opportunity to personalize it further. What I'm doing here with these circles is making it so that it's a flat panel that was sewn to construct the feet and then attaching the rest of the foot here. And we'll add some details to further enhance the handmade stuffed animal aspect of this after. So a few things about drawing the clothing. As you can see, I have looped it up and over to show that it is worn, I guess, worn over the bear. And then I've also added in some little gathers and wrinkles. You can do this by, when drawing your line work, add some little bumps at places where it might be creased or wrinkled. Okay, so that's that, just so we're clear. <laughs> on what this is. And then on those bumps, you can add some little thin wrinkle lines. I like to loop some of them back over. You don't want to go too overboard because then it just won't look natural. But the way that fabric folds, when it's creased like this, that little loop is what you're drawing there. Okay, now I can hide my original sketch layer. And here we have the outline. I'm going to neaten a couple things up, still using the pencil brush. And then keeping this layer on top, I'm gonna to move to one below it. 
Now with the transform tool, I'm going to tap this and drag him over because I'm going to draw a little scene here. So what I'm doing is positioning him so that he is towards the lower right corner. And then on the layer directly below, I can sketch in. I was going to share with you how I sketched in this window, but my camera battery died. To make up for it, I'm coming at you with some layer organization. Okay, so I've gone ahead and drawn a background window sill behind him. And in my layers panel, you can see I have separated my bear sketch and my window sketch, which will be my final line work here. And I changed the blend modes of both of these to linear burn and reduced the opacity. I've also added in a paper texture here because this is going to be watercolor. It always looks better if you use a texture of some sort. What I'm using is from Upper Brushes Print Pack. In this, there's an overlay layer and then a paper layer below. Then I have two painting layers that I've separated out, one for the bear and his clothing and one for the background. And then lastly, I added an overlay layer for any sort of lighting effects that I want to add at the end. So jumping right in on my bare layer, I'm going to use the dark seep brush for this. And this is, I probably mentioned this in the intro, but this is a free brush that is available to my newsletter subscribers. If you're not already subscribed, there are tons of free brushes, paper textures, workbooks, and color palettes. And this is one of my very favorite brushes from that. It's just like a really solid watercolor brush. You can blend while you're painting. You can blend multiple strokes into one another. So you don't actually need to use the smudge tool with this unless you want to. And for the most part, for this bear, we're going to be painting all on one layer, layering color from light to dark, just as you would when painting analog. This brush is pressure sensitive for both size and pigment. And the nice thing about when you are layering brush strokes, if you want to leave a hard edge, you certainly can, and that will still show up. But if you want to blend things together, you just use really light pressure along the hard edge that you're blending and it'll blend it out really nicely. And so this is one of my favorites because it really does seem to replicate the feeling of painting watercolor in addition to the look. So I'm building up color in places where there would naturally be a little bit of shadow. So the side of his head here will create a little bit of shadow on this ear. I'm gonna speed things up here for you, but you'll see me build up color in other places that there would naturally be some slight shadow. And this helps to add dimension. I'm also only painting in the specific areas that I want this darker brown, so you'll see that I avoid the snout because that's going to be a lighter brown. And as I mentioned before, I'm painting this all in one layer and we're going to treat it as real watercolor in that regard as well. Then I'm switching to this light brown and I'm going to fill in his snout. And then I'm choosing this dark green for his little pants. And then to do some of these details, I am decreasing my brush size. 
in some of these places that I drew the fabric wrinkled. I'm also going to add a little more pigment because those would be in shadow as well from the fabric. For these clips, they are supposed to be metal, and so I chose this gray here, and I'm going to build up color on the side, but then leave some white here to indicate a highlight. So on the right side of the clip, that would be the light reflecting. Then I'm choosing this orangish color for the buttons and the suspenders. Moving on down to the background painting layer, I'm using the same light brown. I'm still using the dark seep brush for this and I'm coloring in the window trim and frame here. So I'm using the same paint color for the windowsill portion where the bear is sitting and for the trim on the outside. I'm going to differentiate between them using light pressure for the trim for less pigment and then heavier pressure on the sill for more pigment. Next, let's stay on the same layer to paint the outdoor scene through the window. So I want this to look distant and slightly out of focus. So we're mostly gonna be painting blobs of color that will hopefully end up making sense. I am starting with this darker blue to fill in the land portion of the scene. So staying within the bounds of the window paint, I'm just painting a slope shape. If you wanna make it easier on yourself, feel free to work on a new layer for this. Honestly, I probably should have. Next, working our way up the window, I'm using a lighter blue for the horizon sky area, and I'm still staying within the frame of the window panes. I'm gonna fill in the remainder of the lower window panes with this color, and then about a quarter of the upper panes. Then I'm gonna to switch to this peach pink color and I'm gonna fill in the rest of the upper windows. For this, I am increasing my brush size and then using really light pressure to blend the light blue with the pink for a more gradual transition of color. If you wanna use the smudge tool here, that can also help blend the gradient really nicely. Thank you. 
One detail I've just decided to add is some snow to the windows themselves. So I'm gonna paint this right on top of the existing window scene, still on the same layer, and I'm choosing white to paint in at the base of each of the panes, sloping down in the middle and up on both sides, like the snow has just accumulated there. All right, moving up to my lighting layer. So I am changing the blend mode to hard light instead of overlay. Hard light is kind of like a more intense version of the overlay blend mode. Overlay is good for emphasizing the colors of the layers below it, whereas hard light more emphasizes the light and dark values of the blend layer itself, which is where we're going to be painting the shadows and highlights here. So this will allow the shadows to appear darker instead of just more vivid. I'm gonna use really light pressure and add a little bit of a shadow here. What this is gonna do is help him feel like he's actually in the scene a little bit more. Still on the lighting layer, I'm switching to white and adding this diagonal scribbling on each window pane to add some light reflection on the glass. Still on this layer, I am going to switch to this light pink to add some cute little rosy cheeks here. And then as a final touch, I am going back to white to add a little bit of reflection in his eyes. And that's it, that's the finished piece. Thank you so much for watching. If you make this and you post it on Instagram, be sure to tag me so that I can see your work. Once again, everything that I used is linked in the description below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more. Thank you again and I will see you in the next one.